Hello everyone, um, good day to you and um, welcome to All In Data's uh, monthly series of uh, webinar, right? And um, today we will be talking about automated public code deployment with R10K, which whereby I, the presenter, my name is Chun Meng, I will be telling you or demonstrating to you how R10K is used to manage codes for Puppet and um, how does it uh, improve our workflow when it comes to DevOps tool set, right? So um, just to make it sure, um, can everyone hear me? If you cannot, please um, let me know through the chat function on the um, GoToWebinar panel, just in case. All right, so I, I suppose that um, everyone is um, uh, is able to hear me, okay? So throughout this uh, webinar, I'll, I'll be explaining to you about automated, automated code uh, deployment with R10 case. Um, given with time, I will also show you demo. And then at the end of this session, I will allocate some time for a Q&A just in case you have um, questions or um, you you want to see more of the demo itself, okay? So, um, okay, let's get started. So, what is the Puppet Code deployment workflow as of late? You know, we all been using Puppet. It's one of the rising configuration management tools so, uh, out there, right? But there is always a common issue whereby people come to me and ask, how do I actually manage my pub code? How do I actually just edit it on the agent and then I put it on the puppet master? Or I do it local testing, put it on puppet master? Or I do I put it in a version control setup, then push it, test it, and then deploy it on the puppet master? So here is the very common, one of the first common pattern that we have, okay? So we, as the Puppet engineer or the Puppet module writer, we would write these codes locally on our workstation, obviously, because so that we can do all our testing that we need. We want to do the testing with our specs. We want to test it with a virtual machine, Vagrant. We want to test with Docker. We want to make sure our code is able to deploy all the cool new features that we want to deploy for our infrastructure. So. Obviously, so testing is involved, but the next thing here, the what we do here is the very standard way whereby if we do not use any form of version control, then we will upload these codes directly to the Puppet Master. So when we upload it directly to the Puppet Master, we will be either using normally the SCP, um, SFTP, FTP, or whatever upload mechanism that your, that your company uses. Okay, and also not to mention there are some people who you know use them in a puppet masterless mode, whereby we instead of uploading to a puppet master, they'll upload it to a puppet agent, and then they run puppet apply on the code directly. So this is one of the uh, most common pattern, and of course um, it's very common do uh, with the new puppet users but when when it comes to more seasoned puppet users or more more like a full stack like a development house or a, a proper team where you have a proper workflow then first of all you will start doing your testing locally and whatnot right and as of course you will do your testing with the um, continuous integration tools like Jenkins or whatnot Again, your aspect test, your unit test, your server spec, okay? And then the next thing is how do we actually uh, manage this code? We will use it with a version control. So um, we will upload this code to a version control repository like Git, GitHub, GitLab, or SVN, Mercury, Perforce, and so on. So we use this com uh, version control tools so that we can keep track of history of changes. And then we also want to do the code sharing. We want to 
make it easily to distribute and you know we want to collaborate with other people so this is where the version control repository comes in right so first we write it write the code we test it and then we push it up to the origin to the upstream so then the others also can download the code and then they can test it they can make their changes apply on it and then also push it up to the repository okay and then so what we do, do we do with this repository so with this repository what we normally do is we we create a local copy of this repository on the puppet server itself so what we could do is usually what i would have done in the past is i would have created a local repository using puppet that will clone out the the puppet code repository from let's just say github and each time my puppet agent runs every 30 minutes it would do a git pull from my github repository to keep make sure that my code is updated at all times of course we will use something like git the uh, git hooks and so on to make it even more seamless right but then again also not to mention when we create this sort of set up like version control repositories, we, we tend to create branches or trunks or tags to accommodate what we need. For example, we are bound to create branches maybe for production environment, for staging or development environment, and then we create branches for whatever cool features that we are working on, or we create branches for whatever hot fixes that we want to patch our system with. Okay, so with that, then we clone them out and create those separate directories manually on Puppet itself, or you will probably need to write a, a Puppet resource or a Puppet class to actually manage the whole code deployment setup. But then again, so we have taken a look at two approaches at this point. So the first approach is whereby we just code it locally and then upload it directly on the Puppet Master or we write it directly on the Puppet Master, edit it and test it directly, right? And the second approach is where we use a version control repository and then we push it to, to the uh, repository upstream. Then we create a local copy by doing a clone, creating a clone copy on the Puppet Master with all the branches or tags, okay? But then again, with the latest change in Puppet, where it's starting from version 3.7, the directory-based environment has been created. So meaning that there were there are no longer conf config file-based environments whereby we can configure our Puppet environments through the Puppet configuration file itself. Okay, so it's no longer possible that way. In 3.7. What Puppet do is it will detect all the configure the environment path that you spec that you create on your Puppet module installation itself. So let's just say you you specify your environment path in the Puppet.com as etc Puppet Labs Puppet environments. So any other folders that's under this environment path will be considered as a Puppet environment. So the naming is pretty much still the same, whereby it's arbitrary, so you can call it whatever name you want. So what kind of issues will we face when we come into the new and improvement of Puppet's directory-based environment? So when we have a lot of branches, git submodules, or uh, manual editing, things happen to be pretty much inconsistent between different repositories okay so let's just say you have the development environment and the staging environment okay but what's the difference between those two is you you will probably use git sub modules or you will create branches to, to manage all the modules in there but what could be different between these two environments is the versioning of the common modules so in the development environment you could be using a module version 1.0 but in staging you could be using version 1.2 so 
it creates some sort of inconsistency between your environments already. So we need to tackle that problem because when we de deploy our new changes on the public code, ideally we obviously want to have the same version of code throughout all the environments because if we have a different versions throughout different environments, the result that we that we get could be unexpected and it could lead to a disaster and that's not what we want. So that's the first problem. The second problem is creating the directories itself. So you will need to go at great lengths to create directory environments. You need to create these uh, folders inside then you clone all the, the modules, the public calls, that you want to write for each specific environment. So let's just say we have production staging and development environment. There is three of these folders in our environment part. So what if we want to create another temporary environment just for testing purposes so that we can deploy a new feature to a specific environment, okay? To a specific public setup. But then again, that will require either us pushing it directly into the development, staging, or production environment. That's, that is kind of like tricky because it could break our setup. So what we do is we create a separate branch called Features Cool Stuff, where we actually work on our new feature. So we will, what we will do is you probably create a new environment for Feature Cool Stuff directory in the environment path with all the codes necessary to deploy the new cool feature. And then after testing it, then you have, then you merge it to development, staging, and production. And then it's all perfectly working fine. Your clients are happy, your company's happy because you get a new feature. But what next is you need to do a cleanup after that, whereby you have to, you will delete the branch from your version control repository, but that is not much of a problem. You can just command away. But the next thing is you also need to do a cleanup on the Puppet Master to remove the dynamic environment called the Features Cool Stuff that you just created. So this is just the beginning of all the lengthy problem that we have because the reality is we have a lot of different environments. We have different codes. We have different branches that we want to test every day in, in our infrastructure. So how do we actually move away all of this problem and push it aside so we can deploy our public code without much problem, without any hassle and dynamically and automat automated, right? So I would like to introduce to you to R10K. So what does R10K does? So R10K is actually a software that allows you to deploy puppet environments dynamically. So what it will do is it will read a, a file that you specify and it will say, okay, you have this file, you have this mods, you have modules that you need. Okay, I will create it for you on this specific branch and whatnot. Okay, so let's see how does this take, how does it work first, then you get a better idea on what R10K is. So in order to use R10K on the open source platform, we will need to install the R10K module from the Puppet Forge, okay? So we can configure it by simply specifying the remote, meaning where is it stored, which version control repository is it stored. Currently it supports GitHub and SVN, obviously it will support more in the near future, okay? R10K is a uh, open source project that is uh, created by Puppet, uh, by one of the contributors back then, and now is being picked up by Puppet Labs, and is also integrated into Puppet Enterprise 3.8. So if you have installed or you you you're using Puppet Enterprise 3.8, you would you can skip this step entirely where you don't have to set up R10K. Okay, you can see here this is a it's a simple installation of how we will create a, a R10K configuration file, or we can make it 
a little bit more deeper whereby we can specify multiple sources of a remote uh, repository and where do we want to create it and where is our directory environment. Okay, the outcome is you will see something similar like this. You create an r10k.yaml file, the cache directory, bar cache r10k is where r10k will store a cache local copy of your version control of your repository and then it will compare it from time to time and it will update it from there okay sources okay you can see there i can have a source called arcante demo arcante demo that comes from my github account okay and the base directory for the installation is in etc papa labs papa environment so basically whatever code that I write in for my R10K demo uh, will be stored into the Papa Environments folder. And this ETC Papa Labs Papa Environments part is where R10K will create all the environments folder for me dynamically. So I do not have to do a lot of things. Okay, so this is how we configure it. Now we will move on to how do we actually use R10K? In order for we for us to use an R10K, first of all, we create a, re, a control repository. Okay, a control repository is where we will only have a single file. Is this file is what we call the puppet file. In this puppet file, we can specify all the modules that we need in order to build our infrastructure. As you can see in here, I have an nginx module that comes directly from my GitHub account, from my GitHub re Nginx repository. And also, I say that I want this Apache, uh, Papa Labs Apache module, which is the latest from the Puppet Forge, and also the VCS repo from the Puppet Forge itself. So this allows us to control how we want to deploy our modules. Either we want to deploy, let's just say, the latest module, to a specific version or whatnot. As for using with a Git, we can specify the branch number, the reference, or the tag, however you want it to be. And then we can specify also where, where each and every of this module to be created. So I have these three modules in my public file. So when I were to deploy it later, the R10K will create, let's just say, a production environment, create a production folder, and then a modules folder, and then it will install the Nginx module, the Apache module, and the VCS repo module itself in the production folder. Okay, you will, you will run something like R10K deploy environment dash P and V. So when we type R10K environment, you you can specify R10K deploy environment production or R10K deploy environment staging to deploy whatever specific environment you want. With the dash P parameter, what it will do, what R10K will do is R10K will crawl the, the remote origin for all of its branches and then look for the puppet file and deploy them on your environment itself. As you can see here in the sample output, you can see that it's deploying the environment production in the EPC Puppet Labs Puppet environment path, and then it's deploying my Nginx module to that path. And it's also at the same time deploying the staging environment with the nginx module in the staging environment itself that way i no longer need to log in to the puppet master create the directory environments manually do a git clone and a git pull and then only run puppet agent what i can do on my puppet master i can just simply run r10k deploy environment and then your very specific environment name or just dash p to deploy all of my environments okay so this allows me then 
in our previous uh, issue earlier where I want to deploy a dynamic environment for the new feature, I can create a new branch called feature cool stuff, put a puppet control file inside, and then have R10K to deploy that features cool stuff environment, and then it will create everything for me. Then the next thing what it will do is, once it creates, it down, it creates a folder, it downloads everything, then it allows us to run Puppet Agent directly after that. Okay, so how does it work in, in, product, in real life, okay? So I'll just show you a very uh, simple demo. Okay, on how R10K really works. Okay, and here, all right, as you can see, I have a R10K uh, repository here, and this is my Puppet Master. Okay, on my R10K repository, I have a single file called Puppet File, and is living on a Git branch called Production. And I only have a single remote branch in this. So let's look at this for a while. In the production, in the proper file, I have just a single mod nginx, and which means I want the module to be installed as nginx, and it's taking, downloading it from the GitHub module, which is from my internal repository itself. Okay. And then on the Puppet Lab side, on the Puppet Master side, as you can see, in, I have an environment part, and inside the environment production folder, I have a few items. Okay, so let me remove them. So, is an empty folder now, as we can see it. So how do I actually tell R10K? I want to deploy Nginx to the production environment on Puppet. So first of all, I will edit this file and say mod Nginx, GitHub, and whatnot, all right? So for the sake of this argument, I'm just going to add another module here. Let's just say Puppet Labs Apache, and this what would it do is I would it would download the Apache module from the Puppet Forge directly. So git at So now I have updated my Git repository with the latest code, right? So what on the Puppet Master, what I can do is I can just do a sim simple R10K deploy environment production to, to see and then it will deploy my environment production directly for me, okay? And as you can see, it's deploying my Puppet Labs environment production. As we go in, we can see the Puppet file is inside, okay? And um, P, yeah, messed, missed out on that um, Puppet, the P allows us to install the Puppet file itself. So you can see it download the Nginx module and it's also downloading and installing the Apache module itself. So now we see here, we have modules and we have Apache and Nginx, right? So that way now my module has been created and I do not need to do much out of this, right? So I have my um, my production environment configured and ready for me. So what can I do from here? 
All I can do now is I can go to my dashboard. Hit a, a node group for demo. And pin the group, add a class. I can say, now you can see Apache is already added directly. So I can just add a class and then the next time I run Puppet, it will install Apache for me directly. And I do not have to configure my environment itself. Okay, so, but that is simple. So, but what if we want to just say, create a new environment, okay? So for this, let's just say, I'm going to check out a staging branch, okay? And in the staging branch, I want another module. Let's just say the MySQL module. Then it add So, so now it created, as we can see here, it created a new branch for my Git repository remotely because earlier I do not have a remote branch called staging, but now I have it, right? So now that I create a new branch called staging for my staging environment and I want to deploy it for with Puppet. So now with R10K, I'll just type deploy and by and as you can see, it will try to redeploy the production environment. And after that, it will deploy the staging environment where it will install the Nginx module, the app Apache module, and perhaps the MySQL module here, as, as we can see. All right? So now that we can see that R10K is dynamically creating environments and downloading environments, uh, these modules for me. I do not need to worry about how should I configure my setup in the future anymore. And as you can see, I have Apache, MySQL, and Nginx being deployed onto this uh, Puppet Master itself. So if I were to Refresh this. I did the metadata. Uh, let me refresh the node. Yes. Yeah, um, it's just not detecting my. Um, my environment yet. Yes, now you can see the staging environment has been created. I can assign my puppet node group to the staging environment, as well as I can add a MySQL class here. Let's just say MySQL server. And I can just add it here. And then now my setup could be will be complete, right? I, whereby I can just create dynamic environments. I can assign servers to these node groups based on the envi dynamic environments I created and so forth. So I can create as many branch that I want. And then do the same thing. With Git, it creates a new branch, and then on R10K, I just need to run puppet deploy environment dash p to deploy everything. Dash v is to make it verbose so that you can you and I can see what is actually happening in the background, right? So this is very simple uh, setup 
we can do. So basically, our workflow will be we create a local copy of this uh, control file, make our changes, make our mods, then we create a branch, then we on top of master, we can just run a our 10k deploy environment. But then again, like I said earlier, what if we have a new feature that a temporary branch that we want to create? So we just created a development branch here that is just for temporary usage. Okay, but then what happened if I were to delete this temporary branch now called development that now is no longer needed? Branch development if push So now you can see that it deleted the development branch on the on the origin itself. So on the puppet master, when I run our, as we can see here on the puppet master, we we have three environments: development, production, and staging. But on the control repo, we do not have a development branch anymore because it has been removed. So when I run R10K. What R10K would do is it will deploy all the existing environment. And then, as you can see here, what it do is it will remove the development environment now because it's no longer being managed. So it's like Puppet, right? Where we manage the resources that we need and tell Puppet to remove those that we do not need by using the resources resource type. Similar to that, R10K adopts the same pattern whereby we will remove the um, branch that is not managed by the control repository and only manage those that has been specified in the control repository itself. Okay, so this is rather straightforward on how we could do something like that. We could make our puppet file here more complex Let's, even let's just say we want to install it into another part. We can install it in, let's say, this, okay, and then Puppet Labs ECS repo. So what it will do here is for Nginx and the Puppet Labs Apache module, it will install into the production environment part. But as for this, the, when you specify the module directory above the, the mod Puppet Labs VCS repo, it will install this VCS repo module inside this Puppet ETC Puppet Labs Puppet Modules uh, part instead of the environment part itself. So any module declaration underneath this from here onwards will be stored into this part. Okay, so let's see how it works. Then deploy and now you can see here first of all it created the production environment and then it created the Nginx and Apache module in the production environment part and lastly it's what it did is it created the ETC Puppet Labs module VCS repository. It removed whatever module that is not managed. And it's still managing the staging environment. So if I were to go to modules, you can see now we have the Apache of the VCS repo, right? So that is how we, the common way we do for our uh, uh, code deployment now we allow us to deploy code pretty much 
dynamically, but there is still the next thing. So what is next from here, right? So we have to create our code, deploy it, push it, and then we still have to go into the Puppet Master and run R10K deploy environment command, right? So that's something we want to take one step further from this. So what would we do next is what we can do with with the uh, R10K is we add a post receive hooks or web hooks if you're using GitHub or SVN or whatnot, and then you add these hooks to your repository so that it would trigger an R10K run directly on the Puppet Master itself. Okay, so if you have multiple Puppet Masters, you can install the R10K M Collective class. Let me show it to you. If you install the R10K M Collective class, it will create for you an R10K uh, plugin that allows you to manipulate all your Puppet Master installations across your environment, assuming that you have more than one Puppet Master that you want to synchronize your repository with. So this allows us to deploy environments across all our Puppet Masters. We can synchronize all the R10K setups and so on. It allows us to even deploy single modules based on that. Okay, so if we can go, we look back into the server here. I will go to my repository and I will create a hook. So this is just a simple bash script to run R10K at a post receive and then so earlier we have to do you know um, R10K deploy and so on when we have our code uh, when we want to deploy our new code right so just for testing purposes let's see I'm going to create a new branch again called dev it push origin dev and you can see here now from here it says it's deploying the dev environment and you it will create all the nginx module probably the apache module and then the next thing you will create the uh, download the vcs repo module that is all necessary right and it's creating a new branch called dev so if we go back to our environments path, you can see we have a dev uh, folder there and now our dev environment has been created. So by using this hooks and whatnot, it simplifies further our code deployment and dynamically. So we can just, when we delete the uh, dev environment from here again once more it will trigger a post receive hook on the server on the repost on the origin and then it will run r10k and then after that it will wipe out the the dev environment that we do not want anymore so that way our workflow has become more seamless and become rather simplified so when our workflow has become more seamless, simple, seamless and simplified, what we can do now is we can integrate this together with our continuous integration or continuous deployment framework such as Jenkins, Travis, or whatever that you are using in your current environment so that we can test our codes, uh, our web applications, our infrastructure code, public code, run it, test it, then deploy it 
and then synchronize the code, run against, run Puppet against that specific environment once it's working, then remove the temporary branch, commit it to the create a pull request or merge it to the production environment, development environment, staging environment, and then run the final puppet agent minus T uh, command to actually trigger the, the, the new changes that you just deploy to your setup. Okay, so um, we have reached to a point where I've completed the webinar. Okay, so um, I would like to open the floor to questions. So if you have any questions, please do post them out and um, I will take a look. All right. So, okay, so um, someone asked, a, asked whether we can have a copy of the slides. Yes, I will upload the slides to the slide share. Um, after this webinar, we will share with you the the video, I'll share with you the slides. And also, okay, we, you want to show the R10K YAML on the Puppet Master? Yes, I can do that for you. So the R10K YAML on my Puppet Master is as simple as this. It just says cache directory is bar cache R10K. Okay, and then the R10K demo source the remote is pointing to a local repository here this has been commented out and my base directory of installation for all my my code will be this all right and if you want okay paste my yes you can have it okay yes i will upload it together with the email that we will send out later on uh post webinar so but if you were to use again, like I said earlier, if you were to use the the uh, the R10K module by Zach from the Puppet Forge, by doing this, by by declaring the class in such a manner, it will actually create the module like this for you, the, the R10K YAML file for you. Okay, and. Um, Yes, materials will be available. All, all right, so R10K cache is where it's, it's actually just a local copy where R10K will store it in the local machine so that we can do things like R10K deploy lists to show us what our environments available in, in our control repository rather than trying to ping the remote origin all the time. So we are creating a local cache. And how long is it cache? Um, at this point, it's only cache un to the point until you run the next R10K deploy command. So it's only updated each time you do a R10K deploy command. Okay, and... Um, so if there's another question here, all right. So if you if you have all your modules locally, SRV directory, then what is the syntax for the R10K? So if if you want to use R10K, right? Um, ideally, you will want to 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 store it with a version control repository because. R10K works best with a version control repository, not where you store it locally on your workstation. That way, because then R10K cannot connect to your repository. You need to allow R10K to connect to some sort of repository, like a version re control repository that allows branching or a reference or commit numbers and whatnot, because R10K is surrounds itself with version control for to make things management and deployment more easy. All inside the Git repo, uh, no, inside the Git repository is only a single R10K file. If we take a look here, it's only a, sim a simple uh, puppet file. There is nothing else in this repository, so I will have two repositories. One repository for the 
control file, which is the Puppet files, another repository for all of my Puppet modules. So that will keep it split and separate. Of course, there is a way to merge your Puppet file repository and your Puppet module repository together, but I'm afraid that will be a little bit more advanced and it will take a lot more configuration and time from this webinar. But then again, um, I'm, I'll be glad to show you some resources and links after this that I will share with you on how to achieve such a uh, setup. Can we, okay, so can we, dis so another question is, we can we disable the cache production machine will not like to have package locally, all right? So um, I do, unfortunately, we cannot disable the cache, but again, in this cache here is we're not talking about the packages, okay? The cache here is actually, we are talking about this puppet file. So if I were to go into, my var cache r10k and i have let's just say the r10k demo so cd is only a bare repository it has no packages or whatnot it's just a copy of the of the git repository version control repository that we have we are not caching any package but we have this so it's easier to for R10K to deploy code because we do not want R10K to be fetching all your environments from the GitHub or your remote origin all the time, even there is no changes. So a similar way like it worked with Puppet, if there is no changes between the cache and the, the origin, nothing will be changed itself so that we save resources on the long run. Certain users to modify certain. So, uh, is it possible? The next question I have is: Is it possible to give a certain users permission to only modify a certain environment? Yes, it is possible. You need to configure the puppet file and the um, the r10k.yaml itself. If we look into the documentation of this. Um, it will tell you what we can do. So, okay. And then here is the public file, allows us the configuration of what we can do and what we cannot do, right? It also have um, some FAQ that allows us to see what we need, okay? And the next question is, can we create a local remote connecting to internet? Yes, it's possible. You would need, you can create a local mirror to your public forge, right? And then when you create your uh, public file here, you would need to make sure it goes into the, the mod path here. You will need to point it to your public forge yourself. Um, with dependencies, okay, um, with R10K at this at present, it does not support downloading of dependencies, right? So you need to specify all the dependency on your own. As far as I've known, as I look at the development uh, milestones for R10K, the next version will allow R10K to deploy modules together with dependencies that is specified in the metadata file of the module itself. Okay, so um, I believe there is um, no other question. So if you have any more questions outside of this webinar, um, feel free again to um, to contact us, or, okay? Um, my email is just right on the front page right here. And uh, so you feel free to drop me an email if you have more questions with it. So after this, I will send to you slides I'll send to you a sample of my r10k YAML file I'll send to you the links that you need to read up on in order to integrate your puppet file repository and your puppet module repository as well as I will show uh, provide you links and document uh, to, to, to the r10k documents yes I will send it to everyone 
Okay, so if we do not have any more questions, then I will say um, thank you very much for attending the next webinar. And I'll, we will have another webinar soon, next week. And I believe my colleague Irene will be sending you emails or you should subscribe to our newsletter so you know when is our next webinar and we will have a lot more interesting chat topics for you. So um, until then, good luck with your puppet journey for our 10K and have a good day, everyone. Thank you.